G Show. Dude, you gotta try the kiss over the top of me, man. It's delicious. book on how to make Mexican martinis. <laughs> I've got the recipe right here. <laughs> Y'all try that. Share it. Daddy's home. Here's yo daddy. Are we on? Hey kids, welcome to the Big Daddy G Show. I'm the Big Daddy G. I don't know what camera I'm on. Am I over there? I'm over here. Okay, hi. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, we have a really, really cool show for you today. I'm going to turn on my earpiece so everyone can start yelling at me. Um, well, today, I don't know what day it is. I know it's Tuesday, um, January something. And um, there is a lot of fog in the Austin area. Uh, the last few days and the next few days, there's going to be a lot of fog in the Austin area. So please, if you're out driving around, make sure that you have your high beams on low beams, not high beams. Make sure you keep them on low beams because uh, you can see further that way and, and a lot better. Um, there's a lot of accidents that get caused uh, because of the fog. So some of the things you don't want to do, Eileen is use your cruise control when you cannot see more than three feet in front of you. Um, you never use your cruise control when it's raining and you never use it when there's fog. You should never use it inside the city limit. Uh, cruise control should only be used outside city limits. So please remember that because, um, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people out there um, you know, that want to make it home. So please uh, be really, really careful when you're driving in the fog. And if you don't have to get out there in the fog, man, don't do it. Um, you know, stay home, order a pizza. Those drivers, pizza delivery drivers and, and all the other companies, they know how to drive. They do it all the time. So um, anyway, stay home. Oh, I, got, I broke out the um, Christmas. Uh, globe because some of y'all are nuts like me and we like Christmas and there's uh, Frosty so all right for those of you that are nuts enjoy that and welcome to my world okay um, I don't know where we got this snowball but I'm so glad we have it um, okay I <clears throat> the last few days I've been partying believe it or not, and uh, I was telling my driver, I said, um, I need to use the bathroom, 
So the next store or gas station, whatever, uh, just pull in and let me use the bathroom. And so he pulls into the um, Home Depot in Bastrop, Texas. I didn't even know we were in Bastrop. But he pulls into the Home Depot at Bastrop and basically almost drives the car into the store. I mean, the front bumper was like, they had these huge doors and the front bumper was in the store. And so now I got to get out of the car, <laughs> out of the car. And so the, all the employees um, came around and, uh, and wondering, you know, who it was that was in the car. And then I get out and I said, dude, I just have to use the bathroom. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> so I, I get out of the car and, um, and, um, and I go to use the bathroom and I come back out and there was this really, really um, cute young lady named Amanda that uh, asked me if I would give her a shout out on the show. So I told Amanda, well, let's take a picture. Go ahead and grab your phone, take a picture and then email it to us. And I gave her one of my cards and I said, email it to us and, uh, and we'll show it on the show and I'll give you a shout out, Amanda. But before you watch this photo, Please understand that I'd already been partying for three days straight. So, uh, so anyway, Taryn, can you show the photo if you're ready? There I am. See, Amanda. Hi, Amanda. So that's Amanda. How beautiful she is. Look at that. Beautiful smile. Beautiful Whoa. eyes. Um, so as you can tell, my glasses are all crooked and my hair is all messed up. And yeah. So anyway, and notice we're inside the store. <laughs> so, yeah. Mm. Welcome to my world. Um, we've got um, we got a lot of emails last week because we sh we showed a really disturbing video last week of um, Doug Gray and uh, Charlie White, uh, Wright, and uh, we had we got so many emails people wanting to watch it again. So I asked Tyrone if he could put it together and maybe put some music behind it. And I think, we're, do we have that clip now? Folks, if you just ate dinner, close your eyes. So, all right, go ahead, Tyrone. Can you show him the clip again? Yes, City of Austin, that's your hard-earned money We're at work right there. We just love Charlie and Doug. Um, all right, so the other, <laughs> the other thing I wanted to, uh, isn't that they're not right in the head, see? And that's why you need to be here and do a show. If you're not right in the head, this is your place right here, man. This is where you belong. Ask Chance. Chance is here. He's not right in the head. All right, so... The other thing I wanted to bring up is um, Tyrone has uh, adopted a cat um, that uh, is basically a wild cat, and um, and he named her Holly Hollyfield Hollyfield because she's missing part of her ear. So you know when Tyson bit Hollyfield's ear. So anyway, so he named her Hollyfield. Um, and I just noticed a couple of days ago that Holly Field is, must be a female because she's starting to gain weight, which means I saw a gray cat, big gray cat there um, a while back. So I think Miss Holly Field is uh, with kittens, I guess, or with child. Or is, um, so anyway, the point that I'm trying to make is um, kids, get your cats spayed or neutered um i don't know yeah i don't know how many people or how many cats and dogs are, are had to put down because there's too many of them you know on the streets and stuff so please get your 
cats and dogs spayed or neutered. There's a lot of uh, programs in the Austin area and probably in, in your area that uh, will help you pay for it, if not pay for all of it. So uh, please, please um, get your dog spayed and neutered because um, they're just too cute to put down, man. They're just too cute to put down. Okay, so the other, the other thing I wanted to do uh, or wanted to talk about was um, recycling. And I had talked to Tyrone about this um, a few weeks ago. And what we want to do is we were going to have somebody come in from a recycling center. And they're going to show you guys. We're not going to do it today, but it's, it's coming. Um, and they're going to show you how to recycle, what can be recycled and what cannot be recycled. Um, so that you will hear it from the horse's mouth and you'll be able to recycle stuff. So, um, so that's it, man. That's all I got. Tyrone, do you want to show that video one more time? Can, if you, if you kids think you can hold it, you know, your food down, can we show it one more time, Tyrone? <sighs> I gotta have a drink. <laughs> actually doing that um, as payback because we didn't know that um, that Austin Public Access was using the clips from our show to publicize public uh, Austin Public Access, which is great. I think it's awesome. Um, but uh, Tyrone showed me that a video and I said, dude, we got it. We have to show the kids that because, you know, if if Woo! they if they don't think we're you know right in the head, well, that explains to you why we're not right in our heads because th those are our fearless leaders. So, all right, kids, um, I think next we're gonna go to a quick um, clip that we're going to show you how to live stream. Um, we have uh, like four different, was it Twitter, YouTube? Um, what is it, Tyrone? Can you, can you tell me? Uh, let's see if I can turn this up. Uh, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. Twitch, and there's something else, TikTok or something like that. So anyway, um, please, if you have friends that you think would enjoy the show, tell them to go look it up online. So we're on live right now, online and TV. So we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Hmm. Take a sip, take a rip. Once you live, just double click. It's the Big Daddy G Show. We are okay. Here we go. Hi, we're back. Okay, so um, I know that I'm going to mispronounce his last name, but I believe it's Perella. Am I right, Perella? Yeah. 
Okay, so please um, help me welcome an awesome actor, and you've seen him in a bunch of big time movies, Mr. Marco Perella. Dun, dun, dun. How you doing, bud? Just fine. You did just fine. Huh? Oh, please have a seat. There we go. There's our music. How's that? Okay, so this is Mr. Marco Parella. Is that right? Very good. Very oh, good. thank you. And uh, that's from memory because I can't hear him t tell me anything. Um, I actually uh, have seen you in a few films that I enjoyed a lot. I saw you in one film that I got really upset uh, with you because you did such an awesome job when you, where you played the, uh, the drunk dad in um, uh, Richard... Uh, Ricardo Linkletter's uh, film, uh, and uh, <laughs> dude, you did it so well. I was like, dude, Thank I would you. punch this guy. And I'm not a violent person at all. I understand. But I was like, dude, I would punch this guy if I, you know, if I walked into the situation like that, I would punch that guy out. You did such an awesome job. Well, well, thank you. I, everybody comes up to me at parties and say, aren't you that asshole? <laughs> and so I get used to it. So, so you know what I mean. I yeah, know, dude, I you did such, uh, such an awesome job. <laughs> so, um, okay, uh, I have this thing. Uh, there's a lot of people that are watching tonight all over the world. Um, we Hi live world. stream through Facebook, Twitter, uh, uh, YouTube, and there's one other one. I can't remember the other one. But anyway, so there's a lot of people all over the world watching tonight, and a lot of these people have seen you in films. So um, let's find out a little bit about Mr. Marco and who you are and where you're from and all that stuff. So um, where were you born? Houston, Texas. Awesome, dude. Awesome. Party town. Um, I've, yeah, I've been in jail there a few times. <laughs> uh, yeah. So... Um, so you're born in Houston, and when did you move to Austin? Well, or, or I, what did you I do? lived a lot of places okay. in between those. I mean, uh, give give us some names. But I traveled a whole lot with my family when uh -huh. I was a kid. Uh, so I've lived back east, Pennsylvania, New York. Uh, then we uh, eventually moved from Houston to uh, Arizona, then to Hawaii, wow. California. New Mexico. I lived in the mountains of New Mexico for about ten years. I nice. was a it's beautiful. Worked on for the forest service and fought forest fires for a wow. while, and then I got interested in acting and uh, well, came to Austin. Thought yeah. it'd be a good place to start out. Yeah. And I just never left. I never awesome. wanted to go to L.A. or New York or anything except you know if they if they paid the toll, yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd go. But I've been living in Austin for 40 years. Wow. Well, I don't blame you. I love Austin. Yeah, um, pretty but nice. We always tell people, don't come to Austin if you're not a good person. Please stay away. If you're, a bad, if you're not a good person and not open-minded, <laughs> this is not the town for you. <laughs> so, know, yeah. Poor people are saying, oh, yeah, I'm bad. I can't move to Austin. I can't move to Austin. <laughs> Who's yeah. going to admit that they're <laughs> bad? <right>? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, um, so you moved to Austin and yeah. you got married. I did. You, yeah. That was a very good move on my part, yeah. too. My got, wife, Diane, is yeah. a, She's beautiful. She's you got lucky. Yeah. I, I, I really did. She's, yeah. We are, we're tight. Awesome. Awesome. And you have She's a an actress, too. She does stuff. Oh, yeah, I know. And you guys have a couple of kids also, correct? Uh, yeah. And okay. one of them produced grandchildren, which is ah, golden. Wow. Do you understand grandkids? You probably no. don't be a big daddy. No. No. Well... Grandchildren are your reward for not having killed your kids. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they make it all better. <laughs> and how many grandkids do you have? Two. Two. And an uh, 18 year old boy and uh -huh. a 16 year old girl. Well, say hi. Are they watching? Oh, wait a minute. I think she's 15. 15? Yeah, I'm what jumping. What are their names? Uh, Jeffrey is Jeffrey? the boy. He's a computer expert he always been he's had a part-time job at a big computer company since he was 14 awesome and uh, the girl is Maggie she Maggie. plays guitar and sings real good oh one of my favorite um, cousins is named Maggie oh, so that's her too. nickname Maggie yeah yeah so 
Um, and are they into acting at all? Oh, no. No? God, no, they wouldn't be into acting. But Maggie is really good on stage. Okay. She she's, has a sweet little voice and uh, plays guitar real well. So she's a little bit performery. Nice. Jeffrey, no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> he, he stays in front of this computer screen and uh, he speaks all those languages, you know, all the wild yeah. languages they have. Uh, I can't even remember, Python and all this stuff, and he can program. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is Python funny? Is, that so, is it funny? Because well, I, think, I don't even know what it is. I, I, I used to have good. a Python I'm snake. I'm not the only one. Yeah, I had a Python snake. Is that a video game or what? I don't, I'm not Python sure. Python is a language or some kind of programming language that oh, they use. Oh, okay. Well, let's show you. Yeah, it I'll show you how much I know about, about that. So, um, okay. So... Now you got married, you had kids. Um, mm -hmm. What was it? I mean, when you were when you were a kid, um, did you used to go to the movies a lot, or did you? Oh yeah, I uh, loved movies, and okay. I'd get dr had to get dressed up. Like if we went to see Rob Roy, I'd have to dress up in a yeah. kilt the next day. I had to. Ah. So my, nice. my, made my parents, you know, work on it, my outfits and everything, uh -huh. and then I could act out the movie okay. Wow. And I, I used to have a box of hats and everything. It seems like somebody would have gotten a hint that I maybe could have been interested in acting, but no, right, no, right. no, they wanted me to be a nuclear physicist or something. Oh, you know? wow. I never, uh, so I didn't, uh, I did theater and stuff like that mm -hmm. when I was in school. And I was always loved like it, but I never gave myself permission to do it as a as a profession because I thought I that was you know I, I had to do something serious. I thought right. you know, so I was kind of unhappy doing all these other things until I eventually d decided to just be an actor. At, at what age do you remember going to the movies? You know, like oh, what's I, the I, youngest I, age you remember? Five years old. Okay. Uh -huh. My folks would take me to see all, anything with swords and knighthood nice. and stuff like that I loved. Nice. And did you ever, was it uh, back then, were there uh, drive-in shows or drive-in? We had drive-ins, yeah. Drive-ins okay. were, God, a relic from the past. But we went to drive-ins because, believe it or not, there was hardly any air conditioning in Texas back then. Can you even yeah. imagine what it must have been like? So yeah. you'd, we'd go in and at least you could get some air circulating well i was there at that draw those drive-ins too kid um let me tell you uh so w what are your favorite kind of movies is it comedy or oh or anything but uh well comedy a good comedy is like the jewel of great price right because they're so hard to do big lebowski yeah. I, I could i've seen it 20 times i could see it another 20 and still yeah. be happy yep yeah. It, it's just, yeah. you know, when you get a comedy like that, you just, oh my God. But I mean, there, any good movie, any good genre. I loved, uh, I love, wa I, I'll watch King Kong over and over again. The original, yeah. the black and white one with all oh, their jerky wow. little wow. tyrannosaurus. Yeah. Can you yeah. imagine what that was before CGI and all that thing, when people yeah. went to the movie in 1932 yeah. and they saw King Kong? They must have freaked out completely because yeah. it's still, wow. now, it's still exciting to yeah. watch. Oh, I, I love those old movies. Oh, you know, any yeah. old, any great old movie, Casablanca. Oh. I think that's my favorite. Played I think again, that's Sam. the best movie. Yeah, play it again. You know which one. Did um, you know that one of the first Gerber babies uh -huh. was Humphrey Bogart? Really? He, when he was a baby, he got his wow. Mama farmed him out to be the Gerber baby. Wow. <laughs> you see, useless information. Nobody knows that except me. Y yeah, useless information. <laughs> you just got some useless information. <laughs> we love useless information here. Yeah. Um, okay, so what what is your favorite movie of all time? Let's say in comedy uh, and then drama oh, and man. then okay. science. Well, I, okay, I'll stick with Big Lebowski as a comedy. Okay. I'll take Casablanca as a nice. romance drama. Nice. I'll for for cinematography, I'll take Lawrence of Arabia. That, wow. that has to be the best cinematography. Wow. Though I just saw a movie with some incredible cinematography, 1917. Bam! Did you see it? No, I haven't seen. Don't tell me about it. But go um, to the big theater. Yeah. Don't watch it. In, oh the, no no no! I like no, the big theaters. Because yeah. the, the the cinematographer is yeah. a genius. If he doesn't win the Academy Award, they yeah. should retire it. Because well, it was just really brilliantly shot. Yeah. Well, I was going to go yesterday, I think. I think it was yesterday I was going to go, and it just, um, 
shall we say, it just didn't work out. Didn't work out. <laughs> yeah. We'll go see it. <laughs> but I'm gonna go see it because I heard uh, the cinematography was in, uh, was just it's awesome. It's really awesome. Yeah. What's your favorite? My favorite movie in comedy, comedy, comedy? And oh, drama. Arthur, Arthur, the first Arthur with Dudley Moore. Oh, that was a good movie. Yeah. It was funny. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Dudley Moore, uh, Arthur's my favorite, Casablanca, uh, romantic, uh, probably my favorite. Science fiction would probably be uh, a movie, some of y'all might remember this, but well, there's a few of them, Logan's Run. Uh, Logan's Run? Logan's Run, uh, Soylent. That's an idiosyncratic pick. Well, but that, it's a good movie. It's, yeah, it, you know, uh, there was another one called Soylent Green. Did you, do you oh remember God, that? Oh God, yes. Mm -hmm. They're Soylent feeding Green. you people, or something like that. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, <coughs> so it, now you said that you did plays and stuff in school. Uh, at what, like, what grade? Did oh, you, do I you guess remember? I started in fifth, sixth grade. I'd do okay. a play, and you know, and, and enjoyed it. Yeah. But uh, I didn't do any in in college. We we made little indie films for projects, things like that. Yeah. And uh, when I, I was in school, um, Sigourney Weaver was in school at the same time I was, and she was in the theater program, I remember. Nice. But And I, I, I just didn't do anything there. I had to go off and yeah. live in the woods for a while until I figured out what I wanted to do. And, okay. and so I really got serious about it in uh, Taos, New Mexico. I started mm -hmm. doing, you know, local plays and then uh, just went from there. Yeah. But I knew I couldn't make a living up in the woods, so I moved to Austin. Nice, nice. Is that where you, where you? Austin in the 70s and 80s was a little different town, yeah. you know. It was yep. quite uh, quite yep. small and uh, homey. Yep. And we all had the same, every, you see the same people everywhere Almost, you went. Yeah, you know? exactly. And now it's, got, it's grown so much. Mm -hmm. But we still love you, Austin, but not the bad people. Bad people move away and don't come here. Um, all right, so you met your missus, and at what age were you? Did you, I mean, did you take classes or anything? Oh, uh, sure. Acting classes and stuff? Yeah, I was lucky. I, I found a really good teacher, Cliff Osmond, who was an uh -huh. L.A. Uh, uh, actor, and, you know, he was a character actor. Mm -hmm. But he, he, he devised a very effective and simple system a way of looking at acting, which is yeah. just a, it's just living. Mm -hmm. It's no big deal. There's no great mystery about it. Yeah. It's, you know, you do what you do all the time anyway, right, which right. is living. You just maybe the lines you have to say that the characters have maybe have some different characteristics that mm -hmm. you have to work on a little bit. But as far as the behavior, it's just living. You have to orient yourself like you do in your regular life. Okay. Anyway, I could go on and on about that, but. Uh, when My I wife and I became teachers for him too in his his schools. Nice. Well, you guys have a, uh, classes here. You hold classes here, don't you, in Austin? Oh yeah. Uh huh. Okay. I, I teach a regular class on Monday nights. On Monday nights. And how would people get um, involved with that, or how would they well, get a hold I of you? Well, I have or? a website. Would you okay. believe, Big Daddy? I have a I website. I can't believe you have a website. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When 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 anybody moves to Austin. Mm -hmm. At the city limits, they, they meet them at the city limits with a guitar, a dog, and a web address and you know, so they can have go. a website. There you go. You can live in Austin now. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Uh, and what's it's your mine is actorworkshop.com. That's actorworkshop.com. Actorworkshop.com. Yeah, okay. and they, they don't have to sign up for a series. You can just come take one anytime you want and, and pay me. Ha. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's... Um, that's the way you learn, you know. I mean, you gotta you gotta go from somebody or go to somebody who's been there because they will tell you what to expect. They will tell you what he, this is what's coming, or this is what, you know this is what you need to do to make it work. Now, I yeah. heard I heard that you had worked with uh, Clint Eastwood at one time. I did. I okay. did a movie with Clint. It was he was very easy to work with. Mm -hmm. He has a complete laid back philosophy toward uh, directing. I mean. We did the most complicated shots you can imagine, car scenes, you know, or driving around and everything, and he'd do one take yeah. and ask the guy, did you get it? 
Uh, yeah, I think we did, Clint. Well, let's go back to the base and do something else. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you want one extra shot just in case? No, no, no. You said you got it, so let's go. Let's go, yeah. Is he never goes over budget because of that. Yeah, that's what I heard, that he's a one-take um, yeah, director. Yeah, and he's a, he's a down-home sweet guy. Really? Yeah. Well, that's what, you him. know, it's, it's kind of hard sometimes to um, to tell if somebody's a nice person or something like that in public you know, or in person. You know, the persona in public, you know, is one thing, but the actual person. Um, so he was a really nice guy. I yeah, mean, he's a sweetheart. He yeah. was, he was uh, just, er, er, everybody works hard for him, I have right. a feeling, just because of that, too. Right, right. It's like Richard, Richard Linkletter. Is, yeah. You know, he's, he's such a great guy and yep. so down to earth and, yep. and talented yep. that everybody just, what can we yeah. do to please you, Richard, yeah. you know? Right. And John Sales is another one like that. Those guys are the directors I, I really have to tip my hat to because they, they made uh, made being an actor uh, easy. Right, right. Well, um, I know that you worked with Richard uh, Linklater a few times. Um, we actually had him on the show. We interviewed him for the show, uh, I guess it was two, three months ago, something like that. And uh, super, super nice guy, you oh, know. <laughs> When you uh, asked him what his favorite movies were, I bet I know which ones. They which, were. which ones? You, they were all film noir. Yeah, yeah. He <laughs> n he didn't mention any of his own. Yeah, any oh, of his own well, movies. He, he mentioned all these other movies. Yeah. Um, super super nice guy. Um, I actually worked with him in a movie called Scanner Darkly. So I was a long, in that long one time too. Ago. Yeah, a long long time ago. What and were you? Well. You were Dude. one of the drug addicts, I'm yeah, sure. I'm but, sure uh, I was. Which one? Um, he, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this one. You've been wearing the shades I, ever since. Dude, I, I was dressed exactly the way I'm dressed, <laughs> Hawaiian shirt and hat. And um, we were filming on in downtown Austin. And I was supposed to go just, I was, my whole scene was just to walk down the street eating a banana. And... Uh, and we'd shot it like three or four times. It's the first time he'd ever shot on digital. So there was no film or anything like that. So we shot it three or four times, and then he finally came up to me, and he probably doesn't remember this. You don't remember, do you, Richard? He probably doesn't I'm remember sure you're this. Watching, but he, he, Richard. Yeah. He came up to me and he says, he says, I'm so sorry, gee, I can't use you uh, in this scene. <sighs> and I said, why? I said, he said, because the, my cameraman is supposed to be filming over here, Winona, and he's following you and he won't stop following you oh that's right you know yeah. oh my God. and so i said well all right but i'm gonna eat the banana anyway so i ate the banana <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i got something out of it um what kind of advice i know this is you know we still got a little ways to go because we have a lot more questions for you but what kind of advice would you give um you know because you started you, you did your first plays in fifth or sixth grade I actually did a dance, um, I think it was in the fifth or sixth grade, at a little school called Zavala Elementary. And um, I did, uh, uh, it was like some kind of a dance, coordinated dance. And we stopped and, you know, the, the dance was over. And it was probably about eight or nine of us. And then the audience applauded. Ah. And that's the first time I'd ever heard. Intoxicating, isn't it? Oh, my God. <laughs> that was it. I was done. <laughs> You're yeah, I, I was Whoa. done right then and there. As soon as I heard that applause, I just, it was just like <laughs> energy. And I was like, that's it. What kind this of dance did I, you do? I have no idea. It was so long ago. Um, oh, it was Do so a little dance. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Make a little love. Well, uh, I think uh, I'm. Get I'm, down tonight. Yeah, it was a, it was a cool little uh, dance. It was a lady who came in and taught us how to do it. And we just did it for the school, you know. Wasn't anything fancy, but it was really nice. And that's what made me realize I like to be in front of people, you know, I like to perform. So, um, at what age, did, now at 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th, did you do plays or Yeah, yeah, anything? I just did, you know, little school plays like you okay. do, you know. Okay. And I, I loved it very yeah. much, and I loved it when I went back to doing plays, and okay. I still do a play every, when I can. Yeah. You know, once once a year or twice a year or something, I'll try to do something. Right. And uh, I've done a few plays since I've been working in the movies mm -hmm. and film, which I, I have to to make money because you can make literally hundreds of dollars doing theater. Yeah. 
<laughs> if you're lucky, yeah. So if you're uh, lucky. But uh, I've been lucky. I've done some really good, good plays too. Awesome. Musicals and stuff. And I, I just tell my actors, if you want to do something, do it for the joy. It's yeah. just it, if it, if you like acting, just do it because yeah. it's so much fun. Right. And then. Uh, <laughs> worry about all the business aspects down the line after right. you after you learn how to do it right. uh, learn how to act first right well um what advice would you give uh somebody that's out there and is thinking that they want to be an actor um what advice would you give them as, as like a first step that they should do well the first thing you should do is like i say take some classes mm -hmm. Because a lot, everybody comes to me and they say, oh, well, how do I get an agent? I need to make a reel. Yeah. If you haven't learned to act yet, dude, don't make a reel. And they right. don't want to look at it anyway. Right. They want to see something from a job you've done, a, right. a, a real movie. You learn to act first and spend a little time at it till mm -hmm. you're confident and you know what you're doing and you can go audition and, and, and you can be viable and then worry about getting into the business end of it. Okay. And that's why theater is avail more available than, you don't just walk up unless you're really blessed with some incredible character look or beauty. Mm -hmm. You don't walk up and get a lead in a, in a movie. Maybe an indie film though with your friends, but you're not gonna just walk in and nail a big part the first time you do it. Right, right. Unless you're just one of those lucky people. Well, I will tell you, um, there was a lucky person just like that. Uh, there was a, a show called The 70 Show. And there was a little guy. The doing TV it. show? Yeah, the TV show. Oh, I remember. That was a good show. Um, Eric, you know, the, yeah. the son, he was doing a play, a high mm -hmm. school play. And um, some lady in the audience brought her cousin or niece or something from California. And they, she was just visiting. Mm -hmm. saw, uh, she turned out she was a casting director. And she went and she saw the play. She saw Eric perform. They were casting for the 70s show. And they flew him out to L.A. He auditioned and he got the part. Well, that's, you know, so it, yeah, it, he was yeah. right for that part. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was perfect for that part. And he played it for, I don't know, 11 years or 10 or 11 years or something like that. Um, so it can happen, but it's very rare that it does happen. But it's a lot of work. You know, you have to really, really work at the, uh, at, at it. I mean, you can't just you know pretend that you're going to go and get a part the very first day it does happen don't get me wrong it does happen but it just takes a lot of work now let's say that um let's say i wanted to come and audition for you you were you were uh doing auditions um what should i bring with me uh what's you know what should i not bring with me um just bring your script uh -huh. uh in the old days, before everything was online, you'd bring a headshot and a resume with you. But nowadays, either the casting director already has it or it's online. They can just go clickety-clickety-click and right. show it to somebody. Right. So, you know, you bring your script with you. And don't bring a lot of bags and coats into the room and pile your purse and everything like that. Right. Entering smoothly and leaving smoothly is kind of important. It, it, uh, it gives you the sense of being a professional, and they yeah. see that. So you don't want to be too clunky. But the, the main thing uh, I tell people about having an, uh, learning to audition is most people make the mistake of worrying about getting the job. Mm -hmm. Oh, what if I get this job? So they're, they're not playing the character's objective. They're playing theirs, okay. and they forget. You know, you mm -hmm. have to lose yourself in the character to have a chance to get the role anyway. Right. So um, I just remind them: have fun, love it, get into the character and do it. That's mm -hmm. your job. Right, right. Um, don't bring kids. You know, you don't want to bring oh. a bunch of kids to the to an audition. You don't want to bring mom and dad unless you're a minor. You Can my mom and know. dad watch my yeah. auditions? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, so. You're saying that nowadays uh, cast directors bring a uh, headshot and resume or don't bring it? What do they you think? usually have it. They usually from, have it already? You know, online. And okay. they, they don't need a physical copy anymore even. Okay. And what can they do to prepare? Because there's a lot of times that they do give you sides. Um, sides are lines that you're going to be reading when you audition. They're called sides. I don't know why. Do you know why they're called sides? You know what? I don't. I don't either. I don't know why they're called sides, but um, no idea. they call them sides. And um, sometimes you got to do a cold read, 
you know. What, well, what advice you, would you? You only do a cold read if the people <laughs> that you're auditioning for don't really understand acting. Okay. They usually give you time. However, what happens a lot is you get a, a script ahead of the time, and go your sides ahead mm -hmm. of the time. Yeah. Then you go into the audition and they say, oh, we gave that part to this guy from L.A. Yeah. Here, read this guy, Spear yeah. Chucker number four. Yeah. And uh, so they, they give you a scene, and you go out in the hall and learn that for 15 minutes and yeah. come back. So you have to learn how to learn uh, scripts and at least come close to memorizing them very quickly. Okay. It's one of the techniques I, I teach. Okay, so, um, so it's really, really important to try to memorize the well, size you don't have as, to. They say you, you can. can't memorize it. Yeah. But the guy, the, the person that's gonna get the role is gonna not be reading the script. Right. He's going to be inhabiting the character, right. and he's going to know the lines so it's more lifelike. Right. It just looks better. Right, right. And that, that's usually what happens, at least. Right. I don't know. That's, that, I was always pretty good at being able to memorize, so uh, okay. that, that was a strength, and I like to audition. Mm -hmm. For that reason, I could, I could get into it more. Is there any tricks um, that you can share with the kids about uh, like memorizing stuff that you know easy yeah. ways to mem learn how to memorize um, lines and activate your uh, visual memory everybody has a photographic memory they just don't know how to use it, mm. it a photo you have you heard of a photographic yeah. memory you know you yeah. see something and it sticks in your head there's a picture of it in yeah. your head they've proved it under hypnosis mm -hmm. things you weren't even aware of that yeah. you see you can go back and, uh, and recollect it from your memory yeah. So if you, I tell people to use a highlighter, color the lines, so you're taking mm -hmm. a color picture of those words, wow. and underline the key words in each sentence and yeah. names or things like that. Look for memory hooks, like words that begin with the same letter that you can put in an order and helps you remember a sequence of lines. Nice. Things like that, and doodle all over the page. For some reason, it, it activates your visual memory and really helps you. Well, you know, um, that is true, what he's saying about everybody has a photographic memory. Um, I was in a car accident one time, and the I'm guy, sorry. That, well, well, I wasn't driving, but the guy um, stopped, and um, he backed his car up. I got out of my car, and I looked at his car, I looked at the license plate, I looked at the uh, tires, and, you know, basically just looked at the car. I didn't, like, on the plate. Or, you know, I just looked at the whole car, and it was kind of a neat car. It was an old, like a 73 Monte Carlo or something. Um, but when he found out that we were all okay, he took off. Yikes. So, yeah, so I went to a hypnotist and um, asked them to see if they could help me, you know, uh, get the license plate. Man, I got the license plate, Did I you? got the make of the tires, Amazing. what it said on the tires and everything, really? and sure enough, we found the guy. That's, so, that's interesting. Yeah, so it, it is true, Woo! dude. Yeah, it is true. You do have a photographic memory. Uh, you just got to learn how to use it. You know? How many wrecks so. have you been in? <sighs> Probably three, and none of them are my fault. That's the deal. None you know, the average ad American adult yeah. will be in two and a half accidents in their life. Wow, yeah, I've had about three. And I've had, I've, I've skewed the curve. I have yeah. had about 30. 30? <laughs> yeah. Well, I've had three, I think. And um, they, two of them were at a, st I was at a stoplight and somebody came who wasn't looking. Um, you know that old saying where the, the guy says, oh, I dropped my beer. And when I leaned over to pick it up, it was actually, that actually did happen in one accident. Yikes. And um, yeah, and so, yeah, it's always been somebody hit me, you know, um, and uh, my but, friend yeah. Brady's had 35 accidents. Wow. He, uh, he drove his friends to the Oklahoma game up in Dallas four yeah. years in a row when he was in college. Four years in a row he told the car. Wow. Four, he had to be insured by Lloyd's of London. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, uh, I don't think I'd ride with him, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, no, he's a, he's, he's I don't a know. good driver. Yeah, <laughs> wow, I don't know, I don't know, man. <laughs> he just buys old cars and drives them until they're completely dead. He wow. won't invest in a new car. Well, um, we're going to take a little, we're going to show you a clip, kids. Uh, this is called, a, uh, I've got it down as a weasel clip. 
And Weasel. Yeah, and we're going to ask you a little bit about it. Tell us a little bit about it. See if you, uh, if I remember, if you remember this. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and show it, uh, Taron. Come, 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 come. Hello, hello, hello. Weasels, the name. Selling weapons is my game. <laughs> the finest of consortium plunder brought to you at low, low prices. <laughs> hey, I do it for free, but a man's got to pay his people, you know? Also, I got to take care of my little baby. Baby, baby. This stuff isn't exactly easy to come by either, if you know what I mean. So tell me, Captain, what can I do for you today? Huh? Huh? Do you remember doing that? I do. I remember doing it. Um, I remember the. What year was that? Do you remember? Oh God, no! I, I think it probably was in the 80s. In the 80s, okay. Wing Commander. It was one of the first uh, video games where you had they had live actors mm -hmm. mixed with uh, little Cartoon? computerized, cartoony, okay, yeah. robot-y kind of guys. Wow. And I was the arms dealer that uh -huh. you'd have to go to if you wanted to buy weapons you'd right. come to me and on the black market I'd sell you arms and they gave me that little ferret and, and they you know how they kept them on my shoulder uh -huh. they put olive oil on my earlobe and the little guy would just sit there licking my oh. ear it was driving you crazy <laughs> I was doing really good to remember the lines because yeah. it's weird this little rat Rough little tongue, you know. <laughs> well, that see movie magic right there. You yeah, know, you, movie you learned magic. a trick. Um, so we're going to show you another clip and tell us what you think about this one. What and kind what of you, animal is in this one? <laughs> I don't know. This is, says almost forgiven. Can we show oh, that? Oh yeah. Oh, the, actually, I'm. The is someone there? Yes. Let me hear the magic words. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Yes, yes. Let me hear your sins, my son. I have committed the most vile sin, Father. I don't know how God can ever forgive me for it. Ooh, sounds bad. What'd you do, cheat on your taxes? Worse. Masturbate? Worse. What'd you do, kill somebody? Father, worse than that. Worse than killing somebody? I fornicated with one of my patients. Whoa, wait a minute. You're a doctor? Yes. And you fornicated with one of your patients? Yes. Eh, no biggie. Was it consensual? He initiated. Wait a minute. He? Yes, is that a problem? It's a problem. Oh. You didn't use a condom, did you? I didn't use condoms. Oh, that's good. Did you use any physical force or manipulation? Ah, uh, does a leash count? I'm not sure. Like I said, he initiated it. I can fix this. I can fix this. But Father, I thought that sex before marriage was considered a mortal sin. Well, it is, my son, but you've come before me with an open heart to ask God for his forgiveness, and your sins will be absolved. Always works for me every time I whack the pee pee. Really? That's it? Dude, I'm ordained. Check it out. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, you're forgiven, don't you know? Go forth and sin no more. Oh, wow. I feel God's forgiveness surging through my veins right now. Thank you, Father. Hey, no big thing. Give me some love. Okay. All right. What kind of doctor are you, anyway? Veterinarian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. We did that when the, uh, the church was experiencing a little <laughs> bit a little, of a slump, yeah. Yeah. shall we say. There um, was a little bit of bad publicity in the air. Wow. And was that a, a film? That was Andy Tran, my friend. He wrote, he wrote it. Oh, nice. Andy wrote it. He said, well, that great was great. Guy. That was great really funny. It. I really, really enjoyed that. Um, okay, so we're going to show you another clip and uh, tell us a little bit about this one. Go ahead and show it, Tara. I'm having a drink with my dinner. Anybody else have a problem with that? Hmm? Mm -hmm. No. Mindy? No. I didn't think 
so. You don't like me much, do you, Mason? That's okay, I don't like me either. <laughs> think that's funny, huh? I think that's fucking funny. What's the matter, you feeling left out? <laughs> Clean it up, man, man. Clean it up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Squash! Scared <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, I wanted to punch you. Uh, there's some more scenes. Uh, that movie's called Boyhood. It was directed by our fearless, one of our fearless leaders, Richard Linkletter. Um, dude, you gotta check that movie out. If you haven't seen it, it's called Boyhood. Um, it's a great film. I actually just saw it the other day. It makes me want to throw yeah. something, though, you know. Oh. <laughs> well, stay away from this. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, what did you do to prepare to do that? That no. scene. <laughs> I drank for several years. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. There you go. No, I didn't have to do anything to prepare for it. Years of research paid off. <laughs> yeah, years of research. Yeah. Um, so you didn't, you, uh, before that scene, you, you weren't drinking at all? You were oh God, completely no. sober? No, I haven't, I, don't, I haven't uh, been drinking since God, some, sometime back in the 90s. Wow. I, I, uh, I got sick and I stopped drinking and my, my liver talked back to me and said, this is yeah. good, don't do drink anymore. Yeah. Yep, that's probably. And uh, as far as preparation for that, I just he did. I, Rick just said, "Here, let's just go." We sketched it out and we did it. And yeah. Tried something and eventually, I think we only did one or two other takes besides that. Yeah. Well, dude, you did an awesome job in that film. Oh, um, thanks. So much that, so much that a lot of people come up to him and say, "Hey, you're the a-hole that." Yeah. You know, people yeah. think I'm, that's the way I am. It's yeah. <laughs> Rick was. T it's some, I think the Toronto Film Festival or one of them and yeah. question and answer, some guy said, hey, you know that guy that plays the stepfather? Why would that guy let you film him the way he is? Oh. <laughs> Rick said, well, he's an actor. Yeah. He People don't understand. Yeah. They think you have to be like that to, to do it. And thank God we don't or right, else right. we'd all be insane. Exactly. Well, did you, you sold it because I mean I bought it. I got I got angry. Um, well, don't. And it was you know and it was just acting, but you you sold it so well I, that you know. And me and the kids got along so good. Yeah. On the, we had so much fun, and yeah. you know, uh, it wasn't method stuff where I'm going around snarling at yeah. the children for four years. You right, know, right. we just did it. And how was it that you got the part? Uh, for that film, because that was a major film. That was a major studio film. Rick Gay called me up and yeah. said he wanted me to do it. I'd done a couple other things for him, right, and right. He, he, they, he and uh, the casting director decided on me, but I never had to read for it or anything. He just nice. called me up and said, I, nice. I said, sure, heck yeah. Right. So know. basically, it's a good idea to behave yourself on a set and not be a lot of trouble. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's true in life as, as a general rule, don't you, Big Daddy? Well, I try not to behave. <laughs> well, it's not as much that's fun. Right. Well, you, but you get to misbehave on your own little oh. world set here. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> mm. Yes, it's good to be me. Um, so to, to audition for a major film like that, mm -hmm. uh, what advice would you give somebody? Be fearless. Okay. Be fearless because what do you have to lose? They're looking for somebody. Your your best friend as an actor is courage, and your enemy is fear. Yeah. And embarrassment is a form of fear. Yeah. You know, you just have to go in there and Jack Nicholson said, ninety percent of acting is nerve, just yeah. having the guts to try something and do right. do something, not be scared right. to do it. Hear that, Sophia? Sophia, Sophia, Sophia. <laughs> I know you're over there, I'm just kidding. Okay, so kids, um, we'll be right back in a few minutes. Um, it's time to take a puff, a rip, or a sip. We'll be right back. Woo! If you're in Austin, Texas, and you're doing film, you need to know about 
this place. This is a gym. If, if you're about it and, man, they have the classes for you to, um, if you don't want to go to film school and you just want to learn piece by piece by piece, you could come here, man, and um, and really spread your wings because I've, I've become a better filmmaker just from being here, you know? And it's fun. It's my playground, man. Um, what would you say to somebody that's sitting out there watching this right now and is thinking about doing a show on public access but just hasn't gotten off the couch to do it? What would you say to them to encourage them to come down here? Oh, man. It's like I have so many thoughts on this. I'm trying to condense it down to one brilliant <laughs> line that you can, like, put on a poster or something yeah. like that. Why not? Why not? You just have to do it. Everybody has an audience. The first step is just showing up, um, showing up, and and then learning. And then once you get it, and then once you get started, uh, continue to do it because uh, consistency and discipline equals success. There's no skipping steps. You know, you can have your dreams and everything going on in your head, but if you're not active, actively making moves to do it, then they're just going to be dreams. Everybody thinks you you need all this stuff before you can actually do something and here you just it, it works you come in and all the resources are here and it's so easy i have a master's in filmmaking i spent three years at ut studying filmmaking and there were a, and i mean that was great but there were so many aspects of filmmaking and a lot of diy filmmaking and broadcast specifically that i really learned here I, I, when I first came here, I could not believe it was not a line out the door. Yeah. And I'm like, why are people not tapping into this resource? Right. I mean, it is very valuable. Just like here tonight, you know, we've learned some tonight already. You know, by looking at the multicam, you know, all different things. We have an equipment room, and it inspires you to want to go and create something new. You have to take that step and just believe in yourself enough to know that there will be enough resources and people around to help you. And just get out there and do it. It's, it's a lot. Like, I've had people who come in and are so nervous, mm -hmm. but then watching them watch their final product yeah. is a complete joy. There's something that you're fascinated by, there's something that makes you tick and is unique. There's no way why you can't use this as a lens to kind of explore that, whether it be Dungeons and Dragons or, or football or music, it doesn't matter. There's something about you that you know you can explore with this and that will actually build your community you have to be able to fail in order to get better you know there's no possible way unless you try and do something that you can be able to learn from it that's all it is is they give you a space to fail <laughs> i know it sounds terrible but i mean like you have an opportunity to create mm -hmm. go create You can't be doing that while I'm drinking. Oh, sorry. oh, hey, kids. Welcome to the Big Daddy G Show. We're on on Tuesdays at 10 p.m. on... Channel 16. Or you can stream it. On TheBigDaddyG.com. Adios. 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 <laughs> it's what we do. Good enough. Good enough. <laughs> 90% still in A! I hope, what do you know? The Big Daddy G Show. The Big Daddy G Show. Hello. All right, so, um, oh, look, blue suede shoes. Nice. Um, we're going to do a little uh, improv here with Mr. Uh, Perella, and um, tell us one more time if they wanted to get a hold of you and take some classes with you, where would they go? Actorworkshop.com. Actorworkshop.com. So write that down and call this guy because this guy has worked with major directors, so he knows what he's talking about. He knows what he's doing. Um, so this is where you want to go. And your wife's name is Diane. Diane. Diane, and uh, she's beautiful too, man. So, um, uh, so give him a call, or you know, look him up and uh, see if he can schedule. And you you teach on what nights? I teach Monday nights. Monday nights. So there yeah. you go. So you, you know, most everybody's not doing nothing on a Monday. So, um, so anyway, so I Thanks just want to do. Thanks for the plug. I'm sorry. Thanks for the plug, oh, no Big worries. Daddy. No worries. You do it well. Um, <laughs> 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 I 
yet. So we're doing. I don't know what that was. But. Okay, so we're gonna. All right, hold on. We're gonna do it a little. In <laughs> I read today that think, parrots were considered as tel as intelligent as dogs and chimps really? and dolphins, really? but I'm beginning to doubt that. Yeah. Well, um, thank you. Um, yeah, parrots. Uh, well, I know they're really intelligent. So I don't know. Um, I'll kick it off, and then you just follow along, and we'll just do a little scene. What have you got in I mind? I have no idea. I have oh no idea. my God! We just have some sound effects. That's all. Oh, so, okay. Was all that right. So, <clears throat> all right. So, <sighs> Marco, when did you get here? I got here at the right time. And who told you to get here at that time? The Space Brothers. The Space Brothers told you. Yes. Now, they're coming you... back tonight. Well, I know, but they told you, you've they, been told not... They told not... me to tell you that they would not be doing the anal probe this time. <laughs> I, I, had, I was so looking forward to that. Well, but they want to know if you want to <gasps> take a little ride around. Yeah. Because you seemed to enjoy it last time. Well, I had a great time. Um, I got dinner, too. It was kind of weird, you know, Soylent Green. You shouldn't have eaten that dinner yeah. because, you know. It's Soylent yeah. Green. Yeah, it's so kind of. What is it? They're people. <coughs> They're serving you people. <coughs> but anyway. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I think Rob just having a good time over there. I think they recorded you during the last anal probe. <laughs> no, actually, that's not me. That uh, that's somebody else. I don't know who that is. But um, but anyway, uh, Marco, I want to thank you so much for coming. Um, it's so awesome to have uh, an actor of your caliber on our show. Uh, so you guys are really kids. on it with these sound effects. <laughs> Kids, thank you for joining us. Uh, we will see you next week. Thanks for having me. And, thank you. Bye bye. And please look up Marco Parella. He's on YouTube, um, Boyhood, um, Scanner Darkly. Just look this guy up, man. And if you want advice, you want to be uh, in a class where they know what they're doing, they know what they're talking about, this is the class to take. So thank you, kids. We will see you next week. Peace. Good job. The Big Daddy G Show. The Big Daddy G Show. The Big Daddy G Show. I hope what do you know. The Big Daddy G Show. The Big Daddy G Show. The Big Daddy G Show. I hope what do you know. The Big Daddy G Show, The Big Daddy G Show, The Big Daddy G Show. Here's your daddy.